Good morning, Team Alabama. We are going to read some more in the Lottery Rose. Please find chapter 11 on page 136 on your Chromebooks. Page 136 on your Chromebooks, chapter 11. From time to time, Sister Mary Angela called a group of boys from the same class into her office for refreshments and a report on their school activities. She taught only music classes, but as the director of the school, she liked to keep in touch with the boys. It was an hour everybody in Georgie's class enjoyed. We like bragging to sister about how smart we are, Timothy told Georgie when the first meeting of the year was called, and at the same time having all the cracker and peanut butter sandwiches we want in the middle of the afternoon. Sister Mary Angela listened attentive, attentively to everything they had to tell her about the, that afternoon. Timothy had a science experiment going, running white rats in a maze that he had built himself, rewarding them for making a correct turn with the sound of musical chimes and punishing them for wrong terms with a clash of cymbals. Then I'll compare their learning time with another group rewarded with food and punished with no food. I predict the food rewarded ones will do best. I know I would. He added, accepting his fifth sandwich and grinning at Sister Mary Angela. Richie had read an article on power conservation and reported on it in some detail. Tom Wilcox told about a recent field trip to an orange grove and a talk with an orchardist. Kevin had written some poetry, which he handed to Sister, to sister asking if she would please read it in private and talk to him about it later. Georgie sat quietly listening and saying nothing. After a while, quite out of the blue, Sister asked, Now, what about books? What have you boys been reading lately? Timothy immediately pointed to Georgie. Ask him, Sister. He's the one with his nose in a book half the time. She turned to Georgie, smiling. All right, then. Let's hear from the book lover. What books have you liked best lately, Georgie? Her words took him back painfully to another classroom. What do you like best, Miss Cressman had asked. He had been afraid to answer at first, but finally he said, I like flowers. And then he felt the hot, he felt hot and ashamed. The kids had giggled. And when she, they saw that Georgie was ashamed and he could still feel the lonesomeness of that moment. But things were different now. These kids were his friends, especially Timothy. And Sister Mary Angela's smile was like her, gentle and nice. Still, the memories that hurt him were too sharp for him to speak. They made his face grow hot and his throat began to tighten. Won't you name just a few of them, Georgie? I'd like to know if there are some that I've missed and maybe have a treat coming. Georgie took a deep breath and then and looked at her. Well, I liked the moon singer and all the fairy tales, especially the ugly duckling. And then I liked the miraculous pitcher in Bambi, and I wanted to read Treasure Island, but it's a little too hard for me. He paused and then added hurriedly, Oh yes, another one, a real old one that Mr. Collier found for me. It's called A Dog of Flanders. Sister Mary Angela leaned forward. Oh, Georgie, I read that book when I was a little girl, and I cried so hard that my father was upset and told the teacher that I should have only cheerful books to read until I was older. I guess he didn't know that I liked to cry over certain books. He nodded to her with a message in his eyes that he wanted to tell her that he too had cried over Nilo and Patrice and when he was alone in the, his room. When the meeting was over, about over, sisters spoke to them about her choir. I'm in need of some treble voices, she told them. My choir boys grow up before I know it. Most of the treble voices in the choir are changing so fast from high to low that we are getting top heavy with deep voices. She glanced around the group. Anybody care to come up to the organ loft tomorrow after class and try out? Richie and Timothy raised their hands immediately, and several of the other boys followed their lead. And Kevin shook his head. Not me, sister. I can't keep a tune going right to save my neck. Georgie didn't raise his hand, but in an answer to her questioning look, he said, I don't know if I could do it. I'd like to if I thought I could learn. Come up with Timothy tomorrow, and we'll find out whether I think you can learn or not. She passed the last sandwiches around and shooed the boys out of her office. The next afternoon, Timothy and Georgie were the first two ready for the tryouts. Sister Mary Angela made a little running tune on the organ and asked Timothy to repeat it with the syllable that she gave him. Pretty good, Tim, she commented. Come in for practice tomorrow afternoon. 
When it was Georgie's turn, she tested him in the same way. And after he had done his best, she played another short tune and asked him to try again. She did that a third time, and just when he was sure that he had failed, she turned and placed her hand on his shoulder. You were born with a musical gift, Georgie. You have what we call perfect pitch. She looked pleased. Come in for practice with Tim. You two will fit in very well with the older boys. The hours of choir practice were joyful ones for Georgie, and it was a proud moment when he and the others, other, sorry, the other new additions to the choir, had learned a choral well enough to sing the next day with the older boys. My voice helped make the singing beautiful, he told his rosebush after his first session with the entire choir. Sister says our trebles are first rate. She is proud of us. It rained intermittently for several days during the week that Sister Mary Angela prepared to have the newly organized choir sing in the chapel on Friday evening. Okay, you're going to add intermittently. Um, it's from page 140. Add intermittently to your vocab, and that means off and on. It rained off and on. You have wipers on a car that are intermittent wipers, and so instead of going back and forth, back and forth all the time, these go, and then they stop for a little bit, and then they go again. Those are intermittent wipers or raining intermittently off and on. Timothy and Georgie were walking back to their rooms for, from the playground on the gloomy afternoon before their final ap first appearance as choir boys when they saw Molly Harper walking slowly in her garden with Robin at her side. Her face looked tired and sad and Georgie noticed and for a few seconds he felt sorry for her. Timothy waved his hand and called out a cheerful greeting to her and Molly looked over at them and smiled tiredly. Hello boys, what has happened to our sunlight lately? Timothy stepped up to the street curb eager to talk to her. Georgie held back, his eyes fixed on the ground. He knew that old Eddie would have said if he had been if he had been there, you're acting like a loony young man, but loony or not, he couldn't bring himself to talk as Timothy did. We're singing a Bach choral at Vespers tonight, Mrs. Harper, Timothy told her. I'm not sure if you know that Georgie and me are in the choir now. We don't why don't you bring Robin and come over to hear us? She came up to the fence and laid her hands on the pickets. Yes, Timothy, father heard you boys practicing the other day. He told me that I should come over and hear you. She could not tell them that after her father's urging, she had said to Rosita, I don't think I'm quite healed enough to hear nine-year-old voices singing a Bach choral. Well, then why don't you vi why don't you make us a visit, Timothy urged. Sister is real glad to have people come in to hear our music. Molly looked down at Robin and fondled his hand. Would you like to go over to Georgie's school with mother and hear the boys sing? She asked, and when Robin's face showed his delight, she turned again to Timothy. Robin thinks the school belongs exclusively to Georgie, she said, and then she added, Thank you for the invitation, Timothy. I'll think about it. She'll be over, I'm pretty sure, Timothy said, as he and Georgie walked on together. When they say, I'll think about it, they mean yes. Anyway, she looks awful lonesome. Okay, go ahead and let's add a few facts if you're not at 50 or 70 facts. Um, what do we know? What's new in the story that we know now? Sister Mary Angela had Timothy and Georgie try out for a choir. And they're going to sing um, and do some kind of performance. And Timothy invited Mrs. Harper to come over. And why don't you add two other facts right now? Okay, we are going to stop there for today, Team Alabama. Have a great rest of your day.